In this episode, we CNC mill an aluminum transmitter stand, we fit test a steady shot bot gimbal, and 3D print some chores? Alright, in the last episode, we created this transmitter stand out of a 3D printed plastic. We uh, did threaded brass inserts, uh, and this worked great. Um, I actually uh, sprayed it with plastic dip, so it has a really nice finish. It's very strong. We learned a couple of principles to improve the strength on 3D printing. So if you have a 3D printer, then this is a great option, but we decided to do one better and CNC mill it on the Nomad as well. We had some scrap aluminum, we milled it on the Nomad, and now we've got a new and improved version. So this is aluminum using the same model, same brass. Brackets, and I'll show you a close-up of what that looks like. But first, let's rewind this a little bit and talk about what we had to do to prepare the model in order to mill it on the Nomad. So the only difference between using this 3D model for 3D printing as opposed to CNC really just comes down to the operations and how you generate it. For FDM, you have to consider that it's building from nothing on the build plate and it's adding plastic. So when it does that, there are different tolerances and the machine behaves different and it really just needs a 3D model and you would generally design that model to be conducive to that, to that method of manufacturing. For CNC, for example, the only changes that were needed to be made to the model was that we're not going to use brass threaded inserts for aluminum aluminum, but we needed those for the plastic to get some strong threads. For aluminum, we'll be reducing the size of those holes, and aside from that, we'll just configure Fusion 360 to mill the material away to create the part that we want. With CNC, we're starting with a piece of stock material, and we have to tell it every operation that needs to be performed to create this part. So there may be things like pockets, which are these deep set pockets that are carved into the metal. We'll do boring to bore out the holes. We'll do a 2D contour to cut out our part. And when you're configuring each of those operations, it's really comes down to feeds and speeds. Speeds and speeds are dependent on the tool that's being used, the machine that's using it, and just what your preference is. A lot of times if you slow it down a little bit, don't bite as much of the material, you can get a cleaner finish. And depending on the software that you're using, you can have more or less control over the variables that go into generating that toolpath. So for example, with Fusion 360, you can identify what the lead in and lead out rates are, what the step down is, how much step over there is in each pass of the toolpath, and just know that you have full control over each operation um, and typically for CNC you'll need to perform multiple operations for example you may drill the holes first then you may do the pockets and then you may contour the out uh, and generally you do like a roughing pass which means you will you will take off large layers of material and then you'll come back with a finishing pass that does really fine layers and work its way down and leaves a really nice finish where you can take it off the machine and you're good to go so let's step through I'll show you what a couple of those tool paths look like in Fusion 360 and then we'll uh, actually mill this thing out and get going report. So the sliding glass door handle broke and this is something we can 3D print really easily. So I'll pull it up, make the model, print it out and fix the door. Can't always work on cool stuff. And it saves me a trip to the hardware store. Twelve minutes later and we're done. Now back to the gimbal. All right, so following up on the Steady Shot Bot, uh, we received the gimbal motor, so you can see those here. I have one mounted to the top of the base. I also mounted them to the arms, so these are ready to be all connected and sort of fit test. So what I've come up with here is, let's take this top plate off. So we have the gimbal motor and we have this block, and this block is responsible for routing the wires. So these are 5208H, they have a hollow shaft which allows you to run the wires up through the center and they won't get twisted. And then you 
you see there's a small cavity where they come out and then navigate up through the arm. So there's three arms and three motors and they form the gimbal. Uh, and this gets actually screwed onto the top of the motor. So this was all CNC'd with the Nomad 883. And then I threaded all of the three mil uh, metric holes which have the adjustable slots. And the thought is, is that we'll mount this hub onto the motor and then we will mount the arm onto that hub. The hub will be bolted into the arm and allow it to slide. You can see it can slide freely. It has about an inch of travel on each of the arms have the same mechanism in place. And it allows you to adjust the center of gravity when you have a camera sitting in the gimbal. So each of the arms, or each of the motors have a hub assembled to it. And now we're ready to actually assemble it and do the fit test. Now I've done all of the calculations and measurements on screen using Fusion 360 and a lot of the physics um, capabilities that it has to anticipate the correct center of gravity and how it all assembles. But having the actual parts in your hand and assembling it, there's no substitution for that. So for now, let's get all of these motors and gimbal arms connected and fit test and let's see what it looks like. So that's it. It was pretty easy to put this together. Uh, I spent a lot of time in Fusion getting all of the specifications and tolerances just right. So the gimbal looks almost exactly like the Fusion diagram. Um, the physics of it all still work properly. And this was an ambitious project, but you can see how the gimbal will hold the camera here. It'll have your roll, your tilt, and your pan. And it folds up nicely into a pretty small, tight, compact unit. Next steps, I have to actually redesign these cores uh, to route the wires better because there are wires that will go through each of the gimbal arms through the holes of the motor around this gimbal arm through this motor down into the base and these wires need to be in place so that we can connect it to the circuit board that we finished last week this will allow us to control and respond to the movements in the gimbal and then we'll be able to start programming it So that's all we're gonna cover today. We had the chance to mill the aluminum transmitter stand on the Nomad 883. We were able to fit test the steady shot bot, and it's looking mighty nice, I might add. And we had to do a couple chores, um, but it's always good to see how we use these tools in a practical world, right? Anyway, so hopefully you have plans for this long uh, Labor Day weekend. You spend it with friends and family, enjoy yourself. And of course, as always, stay safe and have fun.